Hello and welcome to The Literary Life, the Penguin Group celebration of the best writing and the best writers working today. I'm your host, Jake Morrissey. In this edition of The Literary Life, we want to investigate fright, that disturbing feeling that can spring from the most unlikely places, even the pages of books. It's the feeling that unsettles us, that keeps us up at night, that makes us remember our disquiet long after we put the book down. We'll hear from Sarah Waters, the Booker-nominated author of The Little Stranger, a ghost story that's been compared to the best of Edgar Allan Poe and Henry James. We'll also hear from Corin Zelkus, the author of Smashed and Fury, who feels compelled to express herself on what not to do when reading your own audiobook in this edition of The Writer's Rant, and the art director and designer for some of the most successful novels and thrillers published today will give us a peek into how he approaches the challenge of creating memorable book jackets. And finally, Kristen Hirsch will be here to discuss her memoir, Rat Girl, and the pitfalls she faced as a young indie rock musician at the birth of the alternative music movement in the 1980s. The Little Stranger is the involving new book from Sarah Waters. In this novel, which was a finalist for the Man Booker Prize, Sarah writes a truly spine-tingling tale about what happens to one family that lives in a crumbling English country house just after World War II, where nothing is as it seems and where the characters must bear the consequences of their actions and their desires. Sarah, welcome. The first thing I wanted to ask you, Sarah, is when you started to think about the novel that ultimately became The Little Stranger, what came to you first? Was it the plot, the characters, the mood, the, the atmosphere? Actually, you know, I think it was my real starting point was the issues of the time. I mean, as with all my, you know, all my novels have been set in the past, and I like them to be really rooted in what's going on in, in that period. The Little Stranger is set in the late 1940s, which was a period I'd got to know writing my previous book, The Night Watch. And um, I was really particularly interested in class. It was a time of great class changes in the mm-hmm. UK. There was a lot of conservative anxiety about those changes at the same time as there was a lot of sort of working class optimism about them and I I had this in my head but it wasn't really until I started thinking about the supernatural that that I I found a way uh, you know I hoped to kind of address the issues and I thought actually you know the idea of a lonely haunted house might be the best way really to explore these conflicts and these sort of simmering repressions. Well, that's interesting because you don't normally write about the supernatural, if you will. I mean, you obviously write Mm. uh, historical works, but it's not specifically supernatural. Because it's a little bit of a departure for you, did you approach the actual writing of it differently than you have with your past novels? Not really, because I actually know it's true. It's the first novel of mine that's sort of actively supernatural, but lots of my other novels have their gothic moments. You know, I've always been a big fan of the gothic, and there's there's quite a few sort of lonely... um, slightly spooky houses in my other books too and actually you know it it ended up being no different really from my other writing processes because writing is always about character motivation those things you know don't change really whatever your subject matter but one of the things that i as a reader would really was taken with is when you talked earlier about the gothic is the character of the house hundreds hall that's you know one of the great Mm -hmm. one of the great pieces of real estate in uh, in (laughs) supernatural (laughs) fiction i think did you do research for it was it a place that you created completely out of your imagination is there in at least in your mind a real live hundreds hall there isn't no there isn't um but you know the big country house has always played a big part in british british life british history oh, well well you know well into the 20th century and there's still a lot of them around some of them are open to the public now some of them are still in private hands but i visited as many as i could um particularly of course houses that resemble hundreds hall which is a, an 18th century square uh, red brick house. So yeah, I think Hundreds Hall became a bit of a, a bit of a uh, mixture of actually bits and pieces of all of hopefully being anchored, you know, in its bricks and its mortar and its architectural details. I was very happy for it to bring to mind some of the, the great houses of Gothic fiction, you know, Bleak House or the House in Great Expectations or the House in the Turn of the Screw. You know, it wasn't very hard actually. Once I had my lonely country mansion, I found there were almost all these other locations sort of in the margins of the text somehow. Well, um, what sort of research did you do for the writing of The Little Stranger? Mm-hmm. I, you know, all my previous novels have been set in London. So even though I grew up in the country, I found myself not <laughs> not much of a grasp of country life. So I, I did a lot of research into rural life and, of course, particularly rural life in Britain in the 1940s. So that was one whole strand. You know, I looked at doctors, 
autobiographies. That was fascinating. And also, of course, I looked at, um, I researched the paranormal. I was interested in, in ghosts, but particularly in poltergeists, actually, which for me is much more, I guess, behind um, Hundreds Hall. Um, you know, the idea that, that it's not the spirit of a dead person, traditionally, a poltergeist. It's something to do with energy, a sort of energy that might be released in, mm-hmm. in a person who's uh, unconsciously aggressive or unhappy or, you know, so I, I kind of a very much a post-Freudian idea, I suppose. But I really loved the idea that, you know, you might have this great big house that was almost demonstrating the symptoms of, of the unhappy people who, who, who lived in it. How do you define the little stranger in your own mind? I mean, do you think mm. of it as a, is it a ghost story? Is it a, is it a, a, is it a gothic suspense tale? Is it something mm-hmm. else entirely? Well, I think actually, while I was writing it, I, you know, I was I was drawing on on lots of different kinds of traditions. Um, I've ended up often calling it a ghost story simply because, from a literary point of view, that's a kind of shorthand, you know, for a particular reading experience, which is fine. But um, and actually, some some readers have read it as, as a classic ghost story with with an identifiable ghost. But for me, I think it was it was I was much more interested in in poltergeists, which which are stranger, I think, than ghosts. So this is a novel in which very, very strange, dark, odd things happen um, to, to the family, the heirs, who are living at Hundreds Hall. And I'm not giving too much away to say that one by one, you know, these terrible fates befall the members of the family. And that, for me, was very much like a classic Agatha Christie country mm-hmm. house. You know, the story, you know, people just appear one after the other. But, you know, I wanted to make it... Uh, that bit stranger so I guess it was a for me you know it was a kind of collision of different genres a little stranger the ability to parallel or counterpoint the reasonable logical rational explanation with a completely you know irrational or supernatural explanation it's threaded through the novel I think very effectively Mm -hmm. did people's reactions to the novel surprise you at all yeah very much so actually i haven't had this experience with any of my other novels but with this one um i wanted to leave things relatively open-ended but at the same time you know i have a clear sense in my own head about what's been happening at hundreds or what's behind all the all the mayhem and i tried to lead readers you know to the same interpretation but as i say i did allow enough room for there to be other interpretations too and what has it interested and, and surprised me is that there's been that real range of responses to the book you know from people giving you know actively super, supernatural interpretations at one end to other people giving a like dr faraday giving a sort of completely rational interpretation of, of the events um and as i say that's that's never happened to me with a novel before i mean it always happens with novels actually to a certain extent that they're sort of be, become new books for the people who are reading them. They're rewritten by the people who are reading them. But that has happened much more with The Little Stranger, I guess, because I left enough room for that to happen. You know, and I actually I find that quite exciting. Sarah Waters, thank you so much for talking to me. And Sarah Waters' new novel is in paperback. It's called The Little Stranger. Thank you. Thank you.